I just had to make sure that we were still streaming to Twitch. I was like, wait a minute. Um, oh. <laughs> and we're live. Live on LWW. Hello, everyone. I'm back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you are. <laughs> Where'd you go? We missed you so. Seems like it's been forever. I got up. I unpacked all my bags <laughs> that I'd brought in with me. And uh, I, I did a lot of things, man, because I genuinely dropped everything as soon as I walked in the door and like ran in here. Mm. <laughs> that was my story. Hey, everyone. What's going Venn on? time machine. <laughs> We're getting ready for another weekly do, do, do. daily Wednesdays. We're going to be putting that nonsense together all over your face. Um, we going have a massive show. we get a reasonably tight show for everyone. This week, we're going to be talking about the YouTube download controversy. Um, Pine cubes. That's a thing. we got something with Delios, uh, passwords. Those are crazy. Vulcan-powered pies. And uh, pie on your desktop. Now with more diabetes. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, most of the time, um, both me and Nori eat at our desks, so. <laughs> you should get some trays. Yeah, we don't have trays, <laughs> we just have those teeny tiny little tablecloths. <laughs> teeny tiny little table napkins? Slightly bigger than napkins. <laughs> Towels? <laughs> tablecloths. <laughs> Um, yeah, I was looking at the pine Hello, cube, jelly bean. and that, that's a tough sell compared to this little guy. Yeah. Yeah. It's my mm -hmm. Rosebird pie case and my security hole at it, with my, my snake camera. <laughs> Placemats. There we go. There we go. I was trying to think of Place the Placemats. Thank you. <laughs> 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 We really shouldn't have placemats. You should try like a plate. There's got to be paper <laughs> wash afterwards. I just toss them in the uh, the washing machine with everything else. <laughs> the towels, the uh, underwear. Oh. It all goes in at once. <laughs> oh. <laughs> now we have the uh, round, round rubber place, placemats in many pretty colors. <laughs> So who watched the AMD announcement? That was the thing. I might I watched oh, a little yeah. bit of it. Um, yes, you a little did. Bit delayed, but I did. <laughs> a little bit delayed, and uh, I think everyone's like, okay, AMD is definitely back in the game on the high end, which is a weird yes. thing. They haven't done that in seven to nine years. But <laughs> but 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 the um, I don't I don't think anybody mm -hmm. was uh, happy. It was like, oh, so oh, we're we're. <laughs> This current pricing scheme's here to stay. Understood. All right. <laughs> yeah. We're not going back to the old times. Mm. Welcome to the new normal. Mid-range. Mid-range. How much is mid-range? Well, what's the mid-range between zero and a grand? Then uh, five hundred. <laughs> that. That's going to be mid-range. <laughs> five hundred seventy-nine nine instead of four ninety-nine. <laughs> yeah. Hello. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I should say hola. Podcast yeah. Ubuntu Portugal. <laughs> awesome. Why, why did mm -hmm. you say Portugal with a lisp? <laughs> Is that Portugal with a Portuguese uh, enunciation? You don't need to say it with a Portuguese. You are a Portuguese. <laughs> <laughs> you are a Portuguese. Enunciation. Yes. Enunciation. <laughs> Welcome to the wild world of English, ladies and gentlemen, because everything we just said was technically correct. <laughs> technically, words that mean very similar things, yes. It could both be used in this case. <laughs> Worst case scenario, I can cite something from like 1513 and be like, no, no, see, it was in common use at this time, therefore, technically correct. <laughs> Ah, yes, the Ronaldo statue. That became very famous very quickly. <laughs> oh, I bet, Arthur, and I'm sorry. Yeah. 
He's well done. done. Well done. An hour sooner. <laughs> oh, jeez. And they put that front and center in um, <laughs> the airport in the Azorian Islands. One of the issues oh. with that is um, <laughs> it's genuinely the problem. of That had to make it through a lot of people to get there. <laughs> yeah, it did. Yeah, a lot of Aww. people have to sign off on that before statues. A lot show of people up. got paid to launder a lot of money for that to show up there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Art Theron, Linux strong. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's fifty percent on the comp. There we go. That's it. <laughs> there we go. I got unicorn yeah, no, uh, again. I love my unicorn mug. <laughs> I think the only countries that have Portugal beat when it comes to corruption uh, is probably literally every other country in the, uh, in the EU. <laughs> Especially Italy. <laughs> Welcome to Weekly Daily Wednesdays, making friends. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no, Portugal is not immune to uh, money laundering schemes that result in stuff like that. <laughs> I will uh, tell you from... Secondhand experience trying to open up a pizza shop in Portugal is a very expensive uh, venture because mm -hmm. that requires paying off a stack of people. Mm -hmm. Dr. Cleto was going to open a pizza place in Portugal, where he is from. He's like, couldn't afford it. You might be able to get away with it mm. if you're trying to open it in a municipality that is desperate to try and attract more people. At that point, they'll go, oh, that'll bring more people here. Okay. Like, you get fast dragged, you get everything made possible to you. But if you are trying to do it in a municipality that A, doesn't care, and B, doesn't need it, mostly the big cities, forget it. <laughs> I was getting lined up. Because <laughs> we're going to stop the show every time Jill doesn't talk, talk directly into the microphone. This <laughs> <No>. <laughs> yeah, when it happened, like a couple weeks ago, I had moved my arm over on the desk. So <laughs> it's a little different position now. <laughs> I got to get it lined up. <laughs> I'm not joking. We're going to stop the show. <laughs> Still haven't got no. What did you get? You got your video card show up, so. Yes, an older 1080, but it's the mini version I got for my mini ITX build. Because it's still a better card than the 2060 for gaming. <laughs> okay. It has more VRAM. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, that too. <laughs> But looking forward to the um, 3070 and 6000 series uh, benchmarks. <laughs> Benchmark off. <laughs> no, you kids are the new uh, toys. I'm no. ready to buy a PCI <laughs> card. You heard me. Not PCIe. <laughs> PCI. Yeah, right. Mm -hmm. It contains enough PGA. I will be right back. Take a break before we start. Again? Yeah. Well, that was a different... That was getting a package. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's one way to look now at it. Now Sure, calls. sure. All right. <laughs> Drop it off a package. Got it, got it, got it. <laughs> My day was a uh, pain in the butt, and just before the meeting, I'm supposed to leave at 4, by the way, the meeting went on to like 4.30, <laughs> and about five minutes before the meeting, my boss is like, yeah, I need you to add like 200 people to uh, a specific group in AD. It's like, do you have a list of those people? Uh, no, you're going to have to uh, get the list and do it. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Appreciated. <laughs> I did it, but 
<laughs> is that some Microsoft It's Wednesday. Yeah, I can't yeah. say what I'm actually thinking. <laughs> I'm just wondering. Is that, just like, that doesn't sound very difficult to do, but then I'm like, do you have to do it through a GUI or something? Uh, yes, you do have to do it through a GUI because it's Windows. Uh, you could do it through PowerShell, but it's easier to do it through the GUI because after you have the list, you could just copy-paste the entire list of names to the, uh, the text box. Uh-huh. And it resolves the uh, the names into the actual account. So, at l- that that's the only reason I managed to do it as quickly as I did. <laughs> but yeah, no, basically having to go to a website to get a list of people, and then cross-reference that list of people with another list of people from another website, uh, internal websites those um and then basically all the ones that weren't in the second list would have to be added so that's dumping diffing it and yep (laughs) it's dumping and diffing two completely different tables that don't have things in organized in the same way yes (laughs) this would be diffing text file what are you talking about (laughs) tables yeah if if i I could just drop it If I could just drop it into a CSV and just diff the CSV, yeah, no, I totally would have, but... I had to deal deal with a um, spreadsheet yesterday, so... Yeah, it always takes longer to get the list. So I managed to do that in about 10 minutes. There are 200 people now in the uh, new group in AD. They're done. (laughs) <laughs> Except for Gary. Gary's a punk. <laughs> Actually, there were three Garys. Well, there were six Garys, uh, but um, there's six Garys in the organization, but only three of them were the ones that we were looking for. So then I had to also take some time to go and look up each Gary individually. <laughs> Gotta watch out for Gary's, man. Wait, you work for Face Bunch, uh, Face Bunch Studio? Mm. <laughs> you should say hi to Gary's right down the road. Up the road. <laughs> uh, the head of uh, HR until two years ago was uh, also Gary. <laughs> mm. I know this nightly version of Adur that I'm running, which I shouldn't be running, but I am. Why not? Um, <laughs> it's got a weird little tick with uh, my big control surface with all the motorized faders on it. And, like, I'll set something and it's like, eh. it just does like one step of the stepper motor on the fader mm-hmm. after I let go of it. Because the faders are touch sensitive, you know, they know when you touch them and, and you um, move them. As soon as you let go, it's like, just that one's like, eh. I don't know why it's doing that. It's not moving at the software. It, it's, <laughs> there's some weird MIDI CC signal, like, ghost in the CCs, baby. That's what it is. <laughs> um, but it's irritating me for a rational reason. <laughs> it shouldn't be doing that. <laughs> right. I move it, and I, I turn back this way to converse with you, and I hear like ah really (laughs) (sighs) fun times kids fun times so is it on my end or are you genuinely just sending me 75k what are you talking about in jitsi (laughs) huh uh, according to Jitsi on my end, it says that your connection is poor and you're only sending me 78 kilobits per second. I bet I know why that is. Because <laughs> I'm sending 15,000 to Twitch. Okay, alright. <laughs> Wait, does it take more than 8 now? <laughs> it doth protest, but yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Hey kids, that was a crisp 720 you were getting there just a second ago. Um, yeah, I was sending 15. So now it All should right. start crawling back up. Alright, cool. Let me know. Feel free to 
Keep me updated. <laughs> I just noticed because the video got really blocky. <laughs> yeah, it's been bad for me for a bit. <laughs> well, thank you, Pedro, for bringing it up so we were able to address it and fix it. <laughs> Uh, the last few weeks, it's been beautiful for me, so I noticed it was a little blocky this time. Well, I just did something. Might have just been a keyframe, though. <laughs> yeah, let's see. Um, let me show you a magic trick. It's called refreshing. Watch this. <laughs> Bye, Pedro. You're gone. <laughs> Crisp. Are you happy now? <laughs> yes. Can I get a moment's peace? What's <laughs> <laughs> <This> incessant <laughs> nagging? What's Jill getting? 600? There we go. Now it's nice. <laughs> it's picked up for Jill without having yeah. to refresh. <laughs> <laughs> Network issues. <laughs> Effing magnets. How do they work? <laughs> Jesus, why? <laughs> Grab a drink and we'll do a show, kids. We don't have a. Okay. We'll see if we can get through this in a reasonable. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Not an hour and five yeah. minutes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or an hour and a half, like Link Seam Guest Weekly has turned into this hour yeah. and a half long show now. <laughs> yes, it has been. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard because there's been so many stories. It's rough when you it power is. through a show, and I mean legitimately power through a show like we were doing Saturday, just blowing through it, and you still get done, and it's still 11 o'clock. I'm like, jeez. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, now it's coming to the end of the year. People are going to drum up the hype for 2021, because 2020 is a wash, so that as well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Was it Ven that posted the uh, the comic about like uh, <laughs> 2020 is like, oh, worst year ever. <laughs> and it's like 2028. <laughs> and it's just people flipping the bird back to 2020 and people oh, in yes, the 1930s that was funny. and the 1800s. <laughs> and <laughs> yeah. Let's see. Yeah, no, that. Uh, <laughs> I'm glad they uh, submitted that pull request, though. Because I managed to get an up to date uh, copy of <laughs> the YouTube DL Reaper. <laughs> yeah, nice. Yeah, I. <laughs> I guess Matthew had a, a new version on his GitHub, too. Yeah, I had cloned the uh, the repo, but it was a long time ago, so it wasn't up to date. But mm. yeah, it is now. <laughs> yeah, I had uh, just reinstalled it, updated it on this machine, so it was good here. But my other machines have the old version. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we need the app image. <laughs> Just make a GUI. It's yeah. Fine. <laughs> a fan's microphone appears to be noisy. Jitsi, shut up. <laughs> Your microphone is too noisy, Ven. 
Uh, yeah. <laughs> what, are you, what are you talking about? <laughs> this, oh, you uh, know, the Jitsi notification. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have your microphone muted too? What? <laughs> the error box was saying that your microphone was too noisy. And I saw you hit the button when you came back. Did you have it muted? I had it muted when I get up, yes. Yeah. I just want to call shenanigans on Jitsi. <laughs> that's it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's not detecting anything to do with my microphone. That These boxes don't even know these boxes exist. Digital networking of audio, kids. <laughs> it's amazing. <laughs> All right. Let's get that going. And Uh. <laughs> oh, and I suppose I should thank uh, Podcast Ubuntu Portugal and uh, oh, Luís Zambrana for the follows. Yeah. Very much appreciated. <laughs> thank <great>. you. Locked <laughs> uh, and loaded and recording and recording. Let's do this. Okay. Yeah. And welcome back mm -hmm. to Linux Weekly Daily Wednesdays, where we can sit back, relax, take that midweek break, talk about some of the fun things we found going on in the world of Linux, open source, and other fun, frightening, terrifying things. I think we all just finished watching AMD going, hey, yes. we have uh, modern <laughs> cards to play with again. We're going to compete on the top end, to which we, were, we, we all uh, shouted in unison, Wow, that's expensive. Um, I bought that price, though. <laughs> yeah. That <laughs> happened, but that was kind of fun. I came uh, screeching in nine minutes in the door. I dropped. What I dropped was I discovered that uh, Walmart was selling KFC fire logs. <laughs> okay. <laughs> they, they're currently fifteen ninety nine. if you're wondering. I, so I had to buy... What did I, I got eight of those, then I got eight um, Christmas fire logs that you can give as gifts. And so I'll be putting on some gloves and repackaging things uh, this afternoon for holiday gifts. <laughs> it's log. <laughs> it's log. That, there's your fair warning. If uh, you're one of my friends that uh, receives a holiday log this year, that doesn't <laughs> indicate that it's KFC chicken flavored. Yeah. <laughs> LG <secrets. laughs> So yeah, outside of that, man, um I released uh last week I put that up for patrons, the uh Pi camera. So that's the thing. I got the little SSH Pi hack thing I gotta put up. I finished all the primary principal photography and all that. That's gonna be a thing um probably later this week that'll be up. Uh but I know a lot of people are like, man, why are you always covering these firewire audio devices, Vin? That's too mainstream. It's too modern. It's too new. It's a, it's a technology, man. I can't keep up with it. Why don't you do something a little more retro? I am. I'm currently. I'm currently looking. I kid you not. Kid you not. To pick up a PCI sound card for interfacing Linux. Now, this is the one that's going to bend your mind. That's still currently made in production. Ah. Uh -huh. Okay. So it's new. <laughs> Brand new. You can buy one new in box. Uh, things get interesting when you realize it's an, it's not a DSP. It's an FPGA on a PCI slot. And um, stay tuned to that. And I think a little bit later, uh, might be next month, I'm going to start work on setting up, uh, see if I can build it like an outdoor doll, like a music little station on a Raspberry Pi 4 and apply what I know about setting up real-time kernels and all that fun stuff and all the little weird, bizarre, undocumented things you got to get set up just right to um, see if we can make that work, man. If somebody's like, hey, I just want to do like a couple of tracks or something on the cheap instead of buying like an old laptop, which people do, and that's the worst thing you can possibly do. 
for an interface and uh, be able to do it on a Pi. That'll be fun. I just got to figure out which Pi distribution I'm going to use because ultimately that's going to be the one that I'll be able to like ship effectively because apparently I'll be shipping a DAW distribution. So I just got to figure out which one I want to base <laughs> that on. What's new and with you, Jill? Looks- you keep getting yeah. up. Yeah. Oh, well, one thing I got is I, I got a... I know it's older. I got a a GTX 1080 uh, Mini for my Mini ITX build, but it's still better at gaming performance than the RTX 2060. So I got that card, and then I'm going to get probably the 3070 for my new rig. And uh, so looking forward to that, and or, or actually my broadcasting rig <laughs> and then another I need, I need to get something else for my husband <laughs> so um but what was cool is i filled in for noah chelia once again on destination linux last weekend and had a really really great time the um uh, youtube dl fiasco had just dropped so we talked a lot about that but it was a really fun show and uh you know thank you for having me on dos geek and uh Michael. <laughs> <laughs> that took a little bit. Yeah, the yeah. other person. I, I'm a little asleep right now. I need to wake up. <laughs> wake up, Joe. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Pedro, what's new, man? Uh, over here, not much has changed. It's been raining outside. Um, so there's that. Oh, wait, this is England. So <laughs> business as usual many- then. Yeah, it's usually about year four it sets in, Pedro. Like, oh, right, right, right. <laughs> it just rains. It's just something that happens Here's all the time. Here's a question. <laughs> Have you gotten to the point of your uh, stay that you do carry an umbrella with you, even if the sun's out? Uh, no, but the moment that the sky gets uh, really, really cloudy, it's like, no, nope, not risking it. <laughs> mm. All right, fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> Anything you were up to, Pedro? Or did we, did we just uh, no, no, on that? No. Uh, I'm still waiting for the uh, Pie Boy DMG. It's been, it's been That's months. not going to happen. You were looking for things to benchmark. Why were you doing that? Because I was playing around with the uh, the Pie Book, and I decided, you know what? Might as well um, get cracking on that. Just get some performance numbers and write something for mm-hmm. LinuxGameCast.com. And uh, the video will be just basically a summary of whatever I end up writing. I have some key points already i'd like to bring up but yeah it was mostly me uh running benchmarks on the um the pine book and realizing wait a second the performance isn't bad anymore it's only been a couple of months mm-hmm. <laughs> that's really good how are the nice. uh, sock puppets for the video coming along <laughs> <laughs> might have to get Nori to give me a hand with that one i, I think Nori would be more because i only have the one <laughs> yeah you can make a little pedro puppet and a little i don't know um other uh, Linus Torvalds puppet, yeah. I think, I mean, yeah. Aww. <laughs> Richard Stallman puppet. <laughs> Ooh, no. <laughs> so let's get right into it this week because we got to talk about it, and that's uh, what's going down with the GitHub's man. That happened. Uh, mm-hmm. This is from Mars Technica. All this is going to be in our show notes. But uh, GitHub boots popular YouTube download tooler. After all right, yeah, man, it got nuked off GitHub. What are we talking about? YouTube download DL YTDL. It's something you probably used at some point, and uh, apparently a lot of people used it. So they mm-hmm. sent up a notice, and it kind of just got nuked from orbit. To which I was shocked, Pedro. I was shocked because a this mm. is using the DCMA as a weapon inappropriately. Never seen this before. Um, no. <laughs> Absolutely shocking. I had to gasp. But <laughs> once I was done with the gasp, uh, R-I-A-A. Bruh, as the kids would say, we've had this argument before. You lost. I yes. think they might still be writing on mm-hmm. the uh, Kazaa high. <laughs> uh, but... Um, <laughs> Whatever the case may be, uh, yeah, it's um, it got pulled, uh, not just the official uh, repo, but also all of the mirrors. Everyone who'd created a mirror uh, fork of the um, YouTube DL original repo has also been taken down. 
Uh, and the argument seemed to be about the examples that they used, because uh, if you had a chance to read the uh, the README in the YouTube DL repo, it was comprehensive. They literally told you everything you needed to, to know, including a couple of examples which the RIAA brought up as being the copyright violations, which... Um, at this point in time, RIAA, even Nintendo knows better than to just fling the DMCA at people, and instead they start with a cease and desist. If they don't comply, then they start lo looking at the DMCA, but it's usually just a cease and desist because Uncle Nintendo is big and scary, and you don't want to toy with them. Even they know better than that. So, yeah. I hope this is just hopeful thinking on my part i'm well aware of this but i really Ladies hope a and firm gentlemen <laughs> mario gonna cut somebody pedro mateus 2020 no i don't think it will be nintendo <laughs> but uh, i hope a lawyer firm or a very very dedicated lawyer um will get try and get an injunction to bar the riaa from using the dmca as a result of this misuse Does, forever no 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 i mean this all i i don't know only um Legalese, but I'm, in order to, I'm sure this operates something like YouTube's safe harbor clause, where they just they're like, "Hey, we we're GitHub. We don't have anything to do with it. We just pass this information and along, and we do what we're told." Ha <laughs> ha! They to have us. to do it like that. Uh, uh, I saw Leonard French's video on it, and yeah, if GitHub wants to claim safe harbor provisions, they have to comply with these requests. Now, <laughs> a question for everyone is. Who's not familiar, outside of whoever did this, with the Streisand effect? Because <laughs> they You just made this so much more popular now. <laughs> currently more people aware of YouTube Downloader than previously at any point in the history of ever. So I will mm -hmm. say, good job on that. Yeah. Yeah. And <laughs> well, they were I'll even talking go. it. Yeah. Leo Laporte was even talking about it on Twit, and they didn't even know what YouTube DL was. <laughs> so, but it was an interesting discussion nonetheless about the legal ease. But yeah, we had uh, talked about YouTube backup uh, two weeks ago, which is uh, like many other applications for Linux, Linux uses YouTube DL on the back end. So, this is going to affect a lot of programs. And I have used it to back up videos on my own YouTube channel. And um, uh, I also use it to download and archive my favorite videos that I've already watched previously with ads. Yes, I, I know that is the issue, but if you watch it with ads and then download it, I don't think, you know, there should be a problem. <laughs> and I also use it to download Twitch streams as well for archiving because many Twitch channels, as a lot of people know, um, aren't Twitch partners and their videos get deleted after a few weeks. But one of the really good- uh, It's not the worst justification you know, for data hoarding I've heard. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, that actually sounds like a very legitimate use. No, I've thought yeah. about it, you know, like, yeah, it's just like, listen, man, um, no. download what you're going to download. No one's going to, I mean, they're just not going to stop you. Uh, this, wait until they hear about 4K video downloader. What are they going to do then? Because that's even got a GUI. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It does everything mm -hmm. all of the other extensions. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it's also, you know, another really good use case for it is for downloading tutorials for instructions. Just instruction. I have my, you know, students often download YouTube videos for that purpose and to also use for online content for creators. No, so it's there's great. A, I know. want to say, you know, that definitely, <laughs> all of that combined probably makes up probably almost an entire 1% of what YouTube downloader is used for. Yeah, well, I guess so, yeah. <laughs> Let's be honest. I don't like lying to people. Um, most people use it to rip stuff. Now, Pedro, you uh -huh. had a use case. Now, here's the thing. We put all of our videos on YouTube up as Creative Commons. Share like is take them, do whatever you want. Just if you're going to monetize them, you have to release whatever you release under the same license. Um, Pedro didn't have bandwidth. Now, what you were doing, Pedro, was technically... Not legal, but I don't think anybody would be upset with you. Yeah, because when I first moved to the UK, I didn't have internet for a month. Uh, so uh, I, before I went home, I'd stop at the pub, get a coffee, 
download everything from my subscriptions, and then I'd get home and I'd watch the videos. Mm -hmm. There you because go. Because I didn't have internet yeah. at home. So that was my use case. Yeah, no, according to the RIAA, I'm a gosh darn criminal, and I should be uh, fine massively. Well, you just shouldn't use YouTube Downloader. <laughs> <laughs> you can use all the other YouTube download apps out there, the websites or the extensions on Firefox. Yeah, this, this is just like, I don't understand. What, uh, oh, I, I don't there are so many legitimate use cases, uh, even for content creators. Let's say mm -hmm. people like Linux Gamecast uh, that put out Creative Never Commons videos. Nope. <laughs> yeah, no, no idea. <laughs> okay, you, you uh, can come up with a like real-world example. Not one where I have to, if I want to get a copy of our 1080p60 source material that we're uploading right now, where I have to use a, a program like 4K Video Download or YouTube DL to get the version because YouTube only makes uh, the 1080p30 FPS, which they've re-encoded, available for yes. content creators, which I get to deal with all the time. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, this is, there's our comment on it. What's to be done about it? Sit back, grab some popcorn, because you can't stop the signal. It doesn't work. Welcome to the internet. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I also like that one of the, uh, it was one of the links in the show notes that's gone now. It's just a 404. But yeah. that was a pull request to the DMCA uh -huh. repo uh -huh. that had the entire source code and the full readme of youtube dl it that's the way it's gonna roll i mean well done yeah don't don't <laughs> gamify stuff like this the internet will win <laughs> always mm. always um, and mirror ppc and chat you're exactly right you know another another use case is to download the videos to be able to blow them up for accessibility for, for zoom it out are, more than the, the actual yeah. youtube thing does yeah, yeah. <laughs> people like me that are half blind <laughs> Very good. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Linux firmware. Since uh, I think a lot of people, as I said, we've finished watching the AMD announcement. We're like, yay, NVIDIA's back in the game, which we're all very ecstatic about. This is AMD GPU daily. I mean, this is daily updates of the AMD GPU firmware from the kernel repo added to normal Ubuntu Linux firmware package. So, I mean, if you're running something like a 2104, 2004, you can throw this in. This is a PPA, right? Don't use it with Debian, Pedro. Um, <laughs> you could if you wanted to. <laughs> I was going to stay out of that. But if you need a little bit of RNG in your life, this this can bring it, man, because you, you can go from everything's great, everything's not great, to oh, nothing works, everything's great again. Every day, look forward to it. But all jokes aside, this this could be handy. Mm -hmm. This will, more than handy. This could be borderline useful um, when the new six thousand series land and nothing supports them out of the box. Exactly. <laughs> That's going to be basically necessary at that point. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> definitely. Especially till the new kernel comes out for particularly for Ubuntu in. Uh, the spring of 2021. So yeah, like Ven was saying, this will go a long way uh, when you need to install that new Radeon RX 6000 Big Navi card. And uh, it, it, it uses, uh, this technique uses no mode set to boot in Grub once again, but that, you know, you expect with uh, newer cards and then you got to go and download and, and update all your Mesa drivers. <laughs> so, there you go. <laughs> AMD. It just works. It beats better than having to. Uh, it's better than having to install those big icky Nvidia blob binary blobs, Pedro. Oh, well, I heard, one thing. Uh, one I thing I will ne give. They've never worked. <laughs> no. <laughs> but one thing I will give the mm -hmm. AMD cards is that uh, even if Mesa doesn't completely support them, at least you'll be able to boot with it installed and get to the GUI, even if it doesn't work very well. You'll be able to see a GUI uh, that worst just drop down into run level three and uh, update Mesa <laughs> from there. The NVIDIA drivers, sometimes you have to completely disable, uh, disable any kind of kernel mode setting. Because the moment the kernel and Nuvo see the video card, they go, yeah, this is an NVIDIA card, but I don't know what to do with it. 
<laughs> just as long as it's SSH, man, I'm good. Yeah, I can find my way through it. Well, that works. <laughs> this is good. Go check it out. Um, keep it around. It's something to play with, man. I'm, I'm glad to see stuff like this. I can make sense of it. Unlike this, this is like Google goggles. <laughs> oh yes. So this is a, a screen translator. It's an open source standalone app for for not only optical character recognition, but for converting text to different languages. And it's actually a little tricky to get it set up, get it set up and running because you got to download lots of updates and do them in a certain order. But once you do it, it actually works really great. And uh, ignore the the instructions uh, in the article is for the Windows version, not the Linux app image. <laughs> and so there are a few Wait, little you mean differences. I shouldn't be installing Windows in a VM right now to use this instruction. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> uh, okay. All right. Fine. Fine. <laughs> So I actually went uh, to our to linuxgamecast.com um, to uh, to use that as conversion examples, and I played back and paused our LWW video from last week, and it, and it worked. I had it convert English to German, and so when Ven was showing the website for Jammy that we talked about last week, um, it actually I, I uh, uh, dragged the mouse box around. Uh, what makes Jammy unique? And it came out with the German answer, which I'm not good at pronouncing, but I think it's Was macht Jammy einzigartig? Bless <laughs> I'm not you. Sure. But <laughs> Vin would know. <laughs> but anyways, you know, it did it did it from a video. So I was really impressed with that. So not only in picture and uh, text, but video. And this is just this is really great because I remember spending loads of time on my flat big scanner uh, converting printed documents to OCR. That was a big deal. And you remember how expensive that OCR software used to be? <laughs> it was sometimes thousands of dollars for really good software for that. And um, yeah, so th I was really impressed with with uh, Pedro, Screen Translator. Are you old enough to remember flatbed <laughs> scanners? <laughs> uh, yes. I had to use one for university. <laughs> Oof. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I I still use them for for scanning in really high resolution images of my artwork and and photos. Of course, I have a a large legal size flatbed that I do use for that <laughs> on occasion. <laughs> Uh, uh, but, I'm forced to yeah. go into the office every now and then, so I just save all my scanning needs. Which haven't been much, but I just save my scanning needs for when I'm there. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I yeah like, but um, also... Well, that's <laughs> one of the things I like about this. This is great, which is the optical recognition, because, you know, welcome exactly. to 2020. Where I'm like, oh, I need to scan that. All right, click <laughs> with the camera. Seconds. Yeah. Oh, there's the text document. <laughs> Done. Yeah, yeah. So I usually just use Google Photos because they have the OCR um, built right in, and you just click on the image and right click and do use Google Translate. <laughs> but being able to translate on good. the fly like this is going to be great, especially mm -hmm. when you can get a picture of something. Because you think about how many—well, not how many times—I can think of a couple of times when I've ran into like um, non-Western character sets, like um, mm -hmm. Chinese <laughs> or uh, Japanese. I'm like, ah, oh, I don't even know how to key that in to do a search for it, but I need to find, like, yeah. these six characters or these six. Three. I can't copy pasta. <laughs> Just right. let me copy pasta. <laughs> right. So, yeah, good to see. I'm very, very happy <laughs> that that's out there. Pedro? Cubed. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Ven just said, Pedro, I was waiting for a question. So. Uh, <laughs> now, this uh, this is a Pine Cube. It's a uh, it's a camera kit. Uh, it, they'd already prototyped it uh, before, and it used the older version. Used a Sony uh, sensor with uh, eight megapixels, and the, basically the the board stayed the same from like early 2019 to uh what it is now but the current sensor instead of being that sony imx 179 it's an omnivision yeah. five megapixel uh -huh. ov 5640 mm, so, at which point i gotta ask um 
Why? Well, I mean, as so, soon so, so as you... <laughs> wow. <laughs> <laughs> it's Cortex A7, 800 megahertz, 128 megs, mm -hmm. DDR3, uh, networking, 10, 100, 2.4 gigajoules on the Wi-Fi, media LED, USB 2, and that poop-tastic camera. Which, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, as soon, as soon as you get downgraded to that, and we're currently looking at, uh, I, I like a lot of the pie stuff. Uh, I've been a champion of, and I'm like, oh man, that's neat, great little tinker stuff. But at thirty bucks, Brad, thirty bucks. Here's my little hmm. my Pi Zero W camera case. I got a Pi Zero W too, but you can get this and uh, the Gen Two. It's childproof. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> With this, like, built into an all-in-one enclosure for 20 bucks, maybe? So... Yeah. And all this stuff's baked. And you're going to be, like, again, once you roll it back to that um, potato camera, potato camera, potato, potato. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, no, and I get that they probably dropped the, uh, the Sony uh, sensor for the Omnivision, so, you know, cheap. But at this point, with... A five megapixel sensor, the the, the kinds you know, that Pedro, you'd find on a laptop. Pedro, in all fairness, I've heard legend that these could be upgraded with the use of gaffer's tape. <laughs> <laughs> mm. Yeah, I I think I've seen the scriptures. Yes. You'll be able to see them too. If you're our Patreon, you can already see them. <laughs> but yeah, no. It at this point, it's basically e waste. That's it. That that that's what that is. That, it's a seriously mm -hmm. five megapixels <laughs> really hey man yeah <laughs> i mean if it, if it was like 15 bucks maybe but like 30 bucks and you factor in shipping and like i can even like that that that's too much of a tinker device to uh, too high a price for too much to tinker of like there's already baked solutions for them plus that's like big bulky yeah. and like i don't why why you gotta be so big it's e-waste <laughs> <laughs> It's like you can genuinely fit everything in there minus the um, network cable. But then again, you could do like a GPIO breakout in this. Yep. So, mm. yeah. Not everything can be a winner. Yeah. No, well, no, most certainly not. <laughs> well, Pine64 uh, is coming out with the Pine Sill solder, soldering iron that is in development for just uh, $24.99. Yeah, so that uh, would that could help Pedro. Uh, yeah, Pedro. Improve his soldering technique. Pedro. <laughs> I want you to buy that, plug it in, and go to bed. I dare you. Oh, uh, it's based on the uh, TS one hundred. <laughs> it it is basically a TS one hundred. It and. just has the uh, mm. the Pi uh, open firmware on it. Uh, the Pine, sorry, not Pi. But yeah, you are no. So uh, terrified for terrified, you can't even. Yeah, yeah, that's what we're gonna do. Twenty five, twenty five dollars. Yeah, why not? I'd rather spend twenty five dollars on that and live plugged in overnight than spend thirty on a yeah. five megapixel <laughs> camera. But if you get this, <laughs> if you get this, you get this. We could get some gaffer tape and we could put a camera on the solder guy. Ah, oh, there we go. <laughs> yes, yes, we could. We could get it, we could three D print an attachment. You know, we're gonna have like the nice little. Cube and the solder. The thing that stops me from seeing what I'm doing. Yeah. <laughs> well, we can work up a wireless video system so we can like send that to it. Yeah, it'd be brilliant. Delio, Mega <laughs> Times yeah. Four. What's up with this, this is... Doctor Who Time Lord looking cliffs on the side of the case? I see what you're oh, going this for. Is awesome. That's not Gallifrey, and that's more like. Uh, uh, never mind. Go ahead, Jill. Oh. <laughs> So our friends over at System 76 have a new machine. This is the beautiful and powerful powerful beast known as the Thelio Mega. And it's the world's smallest quad GPU workstation for deep learning and scientific computing. And what's so neat um, about it, not just mm -hmm. that it has four GPUs, Hang is that it has one a- one moment. We need to uh, rank the uh, screenshot here. Where are we uh, at on poorly photo? Well, I mean, this is this is not often we get an ultra wide poorly photoshopped. Up. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you this can tell looks... that it's shooped. Yeah, no, no, <laughs> you can tell that it's shooped because the curvature on the screenshot yeah. is not the same as the monitor. A lot and of, uh, uh, it's also more in focus than effort. Effort. Went literally into anything this. else. <laughs> effort went into that. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um. <laughs> I, 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 I'd give this a strong <laughs> seven out of ten. 
Yeah, no, it, it it would like if you were just scrolling by and you weren't paying attention, you could probably couldn't exactly. tell. Exactly, scrolling yeah. by on this, I'd be like, all right, that's, it doesn't like I wouldn't scroll and go, what, what, what is wrong? With you first? <laughs> Wait, what? Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, what I also love about this is the unique airflow. It the air comes through the side of the case and out to the back via several intake 140 millimeter fans mm -hmm. um, that are on the side and the bottom of the case to cool the four NVIDIA Quadro RTX GPUs. So and then, like looking yeah. at the case, yeah, the <laughs> fans definitely go burr. Yes. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> they'll go burr right up against that side panel. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I love their, their animation here showing the GPUs, you know, sliding in there and the, and the airflow. And, Eight uh, two and a half inch bays. Okay, that yeah. <laughs> seems far more interesting to me than the four quadros. If for yeah. nothing else, the the price. <laughs> and it, it's got a separate intake also to cool the CPU, which is really you know brilliant design. And I actually spec'd out the Thiele Omega with the top of the line components and reached forty three grand. <laughs> on it Oof. with the, all the highest <laughs> specs but you know okay here's the thing it's so it's actually worth it because usually you need to you would have to buy several high-end workstations combined to get the performance from this beast so you know uh uh, companies that do, do that render animation or big companies that uh, do lots of AI. This is honestly cost effective. It's instead of buying, you know, three or four machines to do the same thing. This one, I'm going to say for like um, rendering animation, this would only be useful in a case where you have something a local B also like a tower as opposed to something that'd be fitting into a rack. Yeah. Where yeah. you could have well, a massive, like real, yeah, yeah. Render cards, well, the like content Voltas creation, V one thousands. Yeah, this, this is, is for content this creation. This is for like people at home. Yeah, content creation. Yeah, well, when you're like, say, you're using Blender and you have a, uh, you know, uh, two terabyte uh, blend file, that's what this would be good for. <laughs> this could probably true through that, maybe. Um, <laughs> yeah. One thing I'm looking at is uh, the different color options for the wood paneling. I want to see an option for carbon fiber, and I also want an option for a spoiler. No, <laughs> yes. I, I like that yes. blue one that you were looking at because it oh. reminds me of uh, white and blue soap, yeah, you which see. is very popular in Portugal. <laughs> <laughs> also delicious, but this would look a lot better with a spoiler on the back. That's... Oh, System 76, you need to get the, the uh, Mattel fireball on the side. <laughs> there you go. See if you can uh, get that li requires that license. licensing. <laughs> yes. <laughs> But these are starting at seventy four ninety nine, so that's two fifty two a month with their financing plan. Uh, that's cool, man. Um, that's and, very good compared well, to. Oh, wait a second, wait, no, the Mac Pro costs about the same at the lowest end. <laughs> the like I said, uh, definitely for like stay, you know, like local rendering because there's the big hitch with any desktop system that you're going to see like this because this is going to be limited to um, only uh, two hundred fifty six gigs of memory. Yep, which depending on what you're up to, can be kind of anemic, but yeah. it's well mm -hmm. priced. Still yes, needs a yes. spoiler. <laughs> yeah, no, that's it. Any, <laughs> anytime something gets around Mac Pro pricing, my brain just goes, just let it go. <laughs> I like you're it, never going to have Here's one. Here's the thing. If you're going to have Mac, <laughs> Mac Pro pricing, you need to have Mac Pro level design, and System76 has definitely stepped up to that on the engineering side. Oh, yeah. Yeah. They're doing their own cases now, even for even if that's a reasonably standard EATX motherboard under there. It's um yeah, no, that that, Pedro, that case alone has I mean, a yeah, lot we of our really like roll back and think about it because I don't know. I mean I'm happy with like open air test bench by that. I mean a pizza box, like I'm good. But <laughs> you know, I know people <laughs> it, it's good to have the nice pretty option for people who are into that. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. And if it's if beautiful. the Linux world needs a Mac Pro in order to play with the big boys, yeah, System76 might as well do it. That's fine. Wheels <laughs> and a spoiler, though. That... <laughs> the spinny rims. No, no, no. Oh, could, could we get like a neon undercarriage kit? 
Yeah, <laughs> that's that's what LEDs are for, man. No, I, I want um cathode, I, cold cathode. Oh, you want the actual? <laughs> oh, baby, I used to have that. That's how we used to light our systems before LEDs, baby. I put some cold cathodes in cases before, not yeah, for myself, I remember but doing for that. people. <laughs> yeah, um, even neon. Oh. <laughs> let's take a look at um, password man. We've I think we give this a mention that Abita was coming our way but there's a yeah. they there's a password threatened manager. yeah right to mm-hmm. release one password um well the, they threatened to make the uh, open beta available it wasn't closed beta before uh and now everyone is welcome to download it uh kick the tires let them know what's broken what's working if you're having any issues uh Basically, Can, it's a beta test. One point Just is have coming. I, I want some help for audio listen listeners. Uh, Jill, describe what's wrong with those children's heads. Uh, they're in cardboard boxes. That's oh, they're wearing cardboard guess. box helmets. Maybe. Okay, yeah. is that yeah. it? <laughs> yeah, I, I guess because it's for security. <laughs> so instead that, of helmets, I think they're, they're imagining cardboard. that they're on a spaceship. Oh, so yes. that is, they're marketing like, oh, we're as secure as a cardboard box helmet. <laughs> okay. No, they're supposed We're to be as secure as your astronauts imagination. going to space. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no, it's one password. Uh, it's available in a multitude of different ways. In fact, when we covered uh, the uh, closed beta, they said that there was a snap available, and I'm like, oh god, please no. Oh god, please, can we have an actual package? for it and thankfully i uh clicked on their um support link there's it it's in the article it'll also be in the show notes and i started going through it. it's like oh, okay there's a deb there's an rpm there's a snap and there's an app image yep. nice. hey! <laughs> perfect we're good, <laughs> That's good to see it, man. they get free accounts for open source teams and um hey you can have get this man you can get this set up what do we debian ubuntu centos fedora red hat rel linux um oh snap store mm-hmm. go check that out if you don't like app images <laughs> <laughs> the app image makes it so easy <laughs> i Good work, Dave. Founder of One Password, Canadian. Uh, <laughs> Canadian Dave. All right. Canadian Aww. Dave, man. What? You got a problem with Canadian Dave all of a sudden? Uh, no. no, I know uh, English Dave. Um, English Dave. And English Dave has another friend called Dave. He calls him Dodgy Dave for reasons. Uh, <laughs> what is he, Welsh? I don't know. Uh, uh, I do know a uh, Welsh uh, Dave. And I've heard many, many stories because he used to work where I work now, many years ago. Mm. Okay. And I hear some okay. stories. <laughs> Welsh, Welsh Dave, only legend. <laughs> no, Welsh Dave is a legend. That, right. that man. <laughs> See, that's how you know you're a legend when you no longer work there. Yeah, we promoted you out of this department. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> Jill, do you have any thoughts on this? Yeah, so you know, we had talked about this uh the Linux development preview which was released in in August and now it's nice to see it in beta and it has a lot of nice new you know, great new features too. So, looking forward to playing with this even more. Hmm. Mm-hmm. You see you just you put them on sticky notes, your passwords right here on your monitor on the edges like a normal person. <laughs> at home yeah you can well, get away with that well, i mean <laughs> that's one of the advantages of like getting bigger monitors is so you can put more sticky notes <laughs> more together sticky notes, yeah. Yeah, uh, you, you can have longer um passwords better entropy entropy and ah you can go for the passphrase okay i can yeah. man. i have like 43 inches to play with so i i, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know man um there are dangers to using password managers in general. It, they're so convenient. Google, I know I absolutely mm. immediately fell mm-hmm. for the Google's like, want me to save that? Yes, Google. Oh, what? And the first time I realized, wait, this just goes to whatever it device sinks. I log into. Yeah. Uh? <laughs> like, you get all the passwords, Google. Yes. Um, and <laughs> I did run into an issue with but those are all passwords that like I've come up with. So it's a variation on like 17 to 23 passwords that are 27. You're to going 32. to get captured before you run. <laughs> yeah. Well, here's the thing. You got to hack your password sometimes. You know what I'm talking about, people at home. You've done it. You're like, oh man, all right. What was the account? 
what password was for this gun? Was it this? Dun, 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 dun? And he's just keeping eventually like, ah, I got it. And you feel successful. The problem comes in. I'm curious if this uh, will do this. This could be just a little side jack is, have you had Google or Firefox recommend like, hey, man, we got this ultra secure password for you. Creating a new account. I'm like, you know what? That sounds mm-hmm. like a plan. Boom, I'm going to take that. You can't get logged in to that Google account anymore. Or at that time, you're never getting in that account again. No, No. (laughs) it's gone. There's zero chance of you doing account recovery for that. And uh, I learned that the hard way. So I no longer do that. Mm. That was my little um, sad dance. What would you think? (laughs) There's uh, there's, uh, also another point to that, which is... um, yeah, they'll suggest the like the twenty or thirteen character long passwords, which are random to their credit. And sometimes I'll go to a website that I don't ever return, uh, don't ever intend to return to, and I say, "Okay, generate me that password." And I click create account, and it says, "Nope, can't have repeated characters on the password." It's like, mm. I'm sorry. <laughs> 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 the most secure password that my browser just offered to create for your website and you're not taking it? Uh-oh. <laughs> That's when I leave. Uh-oh. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> Whatever I went to that website to do, I don't. <laughs> yeah, then I, I don't like having to... I mean, I rarely create... Any, uh, there, there was a talk on Linux Gaming um, by Collabora and all that yesterday, and I went, I was like, hey, this would be neat to watch. Oh, I have to create an account? Okay, well, I... Oh, I have to like register for. But mm-hmm. <laughs> no, I pieced right out. This is something I was. This is like something I cover weekly. And no, you just have too many layers of like. Just you get. How about you give me the talk? And um, yeah, no account. Yeah. You're the business, so give me your business. Because if you don't, you're not getting my yeah. patronage. <laughs> Speaking of patronage. <laughs> Patreon.com Yay. forward slash Linux Gamecast. Uh, I'm going to give Pedro a <laughs> patronage point for that one. That was like a smooth <laughs> segue. <laughs> this is how we finance the show and what we do. If you'd like to help us out, kick us some coin. We'd very much appreciate it. We try to give you some cool rewards back in return, up to including access to our Discord. We get a special show. You think this show's just sitting around, you know, talking about some random stuff? It has nothing on the pre pre super shows. And that's our production meeting every week which is basically catching up on movies and all the other fun stuff. But access to our show notes, I did a special stream Monday for our executive producers. And maybe not just for them, but I'm like, ah, I, I got some time. I don't want to bug everyone with it. So I did a uh, just a tech setup for uh, the Skyrim job. Because I know eventually in my future there will be uh, streaming a mm. playthrough of Skyrim. So I threw that out for the executive producers and they tuned in and like, hey, it works. It, it runs. And they immediately got bored because, hey, man, it's me playing Skyrim. There's not much <laughs> to it. It wasn't there for your entertainment, but just to see if we could make it work. And anyway, it worked out all right. But we got to think uh, a legend, Pedro. <laughs> a different kind of legend. <laughs> no, we have a new Patreon. <laughs> we do. Jill, uh, what's our Patreon's name? Yes. Our new Patreon's name is Poop Sock. <laughs> <laughs> so I can say that on LWW. I can say poop. <laughs> but thank you very much, Poop Sock. I like I like your name. <laughs> I'd just like to take thank a moment to appreciate support. that uh, one Jill Bryant said uh, on uh, October 28th, 2020. <laughs> I can say poop. <laughs> <laughs> Strange times. Uh, let's see. What else do we have? Uh, we do have a couple of things. Uh, Amazon. We have wish lists. Pedro's got one. Jill's got one. Uh, I have one for the studio. I got a bunch of stuff. You, I don't use it correctly. If you just want to spy on me, what I have planned for buying for the studio, that's all here. It's boring stuff like drills and chairs and stuff like that. That's how you end up on this wall. Publicly shamed for all time. That's on you. I think Pedro has... Uh, 
don't know. What do you have on yours? <laughs> Pedro, do you, do you have a <laughs> new... Uh, I don't have a wall. I just have all of the little... I'm, I, I'm asking bands. Pedro about, a, about his wish list, and he's digging in a drawer, so you make sense <laughs> of that. I was just going to show uh, the number of amazing, crazy people that decided to spend their hard-earned money on something for me, which, hang on, hang don't on. get me wrong, I very much hang appreciate on. I, it. I, I, I gotta cool myself off. <laughs> <sighs> See, mine are right here. They're not quite as many, but you know. <laughs> I'm sorry, what? Mad Stacks couldn't hear you. I couldn't hear you. I was filtering out. <laughs> Jules enshrined hers. So. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, no, my wish list has a um, couple of SSDs. There's a microphone there. A um, couple of SSDs, a uh, couple of. Whatever happened of, with the microphone? Um, Did the guy get back to you? We've been trying to get my, uh, Pedro a new upgraded oh, updated yeah. microphone. Oh, yeah. eBay. And <laughs> no, the his last thing was uh, 105, and I, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. 105 pounds for this microphone is too much. Mm. It used to. <laughs> used exactly. Oh. New yeah. with a warranty. Okay, 140 pounds. I could probably live with that if I was just buying it. But yeah, for a halfway decent deal, no, 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 no. And you know he'll take a hundred for it. Clearly, if he takes 105, he'll take 100, so I'm just going to wait until that particular listing uh, runs out, mm. and then I'll make another as, offer. <laughs> as a patron, uh, you can uh, enjoy, <laughs> I, I think Scott got a kick out of our conversation, because uh, Patreon's like, well, 105, I'm like, stroke turn, it's me, you know, with the purse strings, I'm like, oh, stroke turn, it's a bunch of car. <laughs> and, <laughs> but, of course, it's too expensive, that's why it was up for like two weeks before I even mentioned it to you, and it's still up now. And the other listing that has also used ones, but at 150 pounds. <laughs> yeah, those aren't selling. I wonder why. What, what we're looking for. So anybody, anybody in the Britannia or in the EU um, has a hookup for a Golden Age D2 microphones or mm. RE320s or RE20s, uh, let me know because <laughs> I can spend some cheddar, but we got to be very careful with the cheddar we spend because we don't have a ton of it. But hey, yeah. go buy some shirts. We got shirts. Go Yay. ahead. There you go. Go get yourself that's an the, LWW shirt. Get yourself a sticker. Look at this. Or that use me, penguin. That sticker. <laughs> that's the best sticker in the world. It's a, a, you can censor naughty words with our um, elk sticker. That's the best use for those stickers. <laughs> yeah. You can censor naughty words with them, with the other semi naughty words. Oh yeah. And before I forget, timestamps and all that fun stuff. That's going to be the little um, YouTube bar if you're watching on the YouTubes now. We finally got that worked out. It takes yeah, a nice. minute to be processed. Nice. Yeah. There. <laughs> I think we're done. We're wrapped up with a shilling and shameless self promotion. So we can bite a nice chunk Ooh. off traditional October pizza. Ooh, pepperoni pie. Pepperoni pie. <laughs> <laughs> if, you know what? You know what? That's, Yummy. A, that's a cheap way to get out of like having to put a lot of pepperoni on something. Just put a little design on it. Like, oh, look, that's yeah. a design. It's so cute. And I'm like, man, I saved a buck on that. All right. <laughs> I only use this much pepperoni, <laughs> but it's artistic. Right. In any case, um, Yago Terrell, you may know him uh, if you've been watching uh, Linux Gamecast Weekly since before uh, LWDW was even around. <laughs> We mentioned Iago several, several times uh, because he's a, one of the um, most extraordinary, uh, amazing contributors. And he did a guest article for the Raspberry Pi blog, which is talking about, of course, Vulcan oh, no, on the Raspberry that. Pi what 4. Are those? Are those the knights that go bling? <laughs> no, that's the knights that go T. <laughs> Shame on you, Pedro. Goatee. Uh, anyway, the, the <laughs> visual gag over. Um, <laughs> that was a good one. On behalf of Morning Weekly Day, the Wednesdays, I would like to apologize for the comical stylings of Pedro Mateus. <laughs> visual gag is done now. Uh, if you were looking for a reason to go watch the video version, there you go. Uh, but yeah. He's finished the implementation of Vulkan for the Raspberry Pi 4. It's uh, in Mesa Upstream right now. So if you go and clone the Mesa Upstream repo and build it, good luck. Uh, but you should actually be able to use Vulkan 1.0. It's 1.0 compliant. Uh, the API is complete. So that's that's very good. Uh, so yeah, you could play some VK Quake 3. Mm. 
probably not gonna awesome. have the RTX cores to play VK Quake 2, but... <laughs> Okay, ten, 10 years from now, are we going to be able to get a Raspberry Pi with the, that's going to have the equivalent of RT cores? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes. I think we're going to have an SOC. With like, oh, yeah, yeah. At least, like, one or two. <laughs> yeah. I've genuinely started digging around and, like, exactly what you can and cannot get away with with a Pi 4 because I'm going to be asking it to do the second most demanding thing outside of playing video games. It's real-time audio. So I, I'm very curious. Always keeping up with stuff like how can I take advantage of Vulcan? I don't know because I'm not going to be using a display server if I can help it. It's all going to be over SSH. So, um, well, yeah. not, I don't know. Pedro was very much against the uh, touch screen I picked out for it. <laughs> I, I yeah. wasn't against it. I just looked at the resolution. It's like, oh, 20, uh, 1024 by 600. Oh, netbook uh, resolution. How much is that? $76. <laughs> That then, that's pricey. Then, then I brought you up to speed on the official Raspberry Pi sixty nine dollar one. That is a four eighty <laughs> by potato. Yeah, eight forty by four eighty. Yeah, no, those are those are bad. Uh, and that's just for the screen. <laughs> this, this thing's like a full size screen with a stand and a holder and all this others. So I'm like, that's yeah, not a bad mm. deal. Yeah. <laughs> well, you can hard mode it and get the e ink screen. <laughs> yeah, but Jill, I, this has to be useful. This isn't a collector's item, so. <laughs> I mean, you'll be able to get really nice performance if you decide to use that to play games on your yes. Pi. The because the resolution's the real low. <laughs> <laughs> Keep going, kids. <laughs> but you can get the three color Raspberry Pi e ink screen. That'll, that, and actually, you'd be paying be eighty dollars for a seven inch touch enabled one. Yes, I just want yes. to become very clear why I'm the one making the video. So keep, keep going. <laughs> <laughs> You're the only one willing to spend that money. <laughs> I excuse me. How many laptops? You, never mind. Uh, let's talk about Ubuntu for the Raspberry Pi because. Yeah, th they got full this stock is, desktop stuff. Yeah, this is huge. Yeah, so the Ubuntu Desktop 2010 Groovy Gorilla Gorilla Goal. Groovy Gorilla. <laughs> sorry, Groovy Gorilla Goal. is now <laughs> officially available for the Raspberry well, Pi 4. I want you to try to say Gorilla while swallowing your tongue. It's not easy. <laughs> oh. Yeah, no, no, no. It's Arr. not very easy. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, uh, what's also awesome is it's not only for the Raspberry Pi 4, but it's also available for the Raspberry Pi 4 compute module, the 4 gig and nice. 8 gig version we talked about last week. That's amazing. And apparently GNOME runs pretty well on it. So they've really optimized it now to run on the Raspberry Pi. So I am looking forward to playing with this, definitely. <laughs> this is really cool. <laughs> Pedro, as uh, somebody with a Raspberry Pi 4, uh, have you even plugged it, like, done anything with it? Is it a desk prop, pretty much? Uh, <laughs> right now, it's waiting for the uh, the Pi Boy DMG. That's what this is going in for. Uh, but, yeah, it's... Um, what about all can? the time? Well, yeah, out of curiosity, <laughs> all the time before the Pi Boy DMG existed, what, what was it being used mm. for? Oh, I poked at it uh, trying to you know do the desktop thing because they That's were what I'm uh, very you tried using it as a desktop yeah <laughs> and if How all you're doing there? is watching youtube videos uh, it can actually do uh, 1080p 60 fps in chromium mm -hmm. firefox not so much <laughs> but yeah. in chromium you can actually do 1080p 60 it's a smooth experience it's actually very nice you put it in full screen and you go all right okay all right That's that's very good. <laughs> I'm done with that. Um, good on you. I didn't expect to see that. Uh, just a full rollout. So, and yeah. being able to work with a compute module. Might mm -hmm. be able to yep. try. Mm -hmm. Give it a shot. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, let's just install Arch on it. Come on. <laughs> yeah. Someone's well, already you could always put a bunch of mate on that. it as well. <laughs> <laughs> and many other distros. <laughs> if you want your pie to be green, go yes. mate. Uh, if you want to get a hold to us, send us some email. You can do that. Uh, we got contact at linuxteamcast.com. That's how you end up on the show. But we are short on time, so we got to.
balance out of here for this week. Let's roll some credits. Mm -hmm. Yay! If this chair wasn't all the way down, I'd be bouncing right now. Uh, <laughs> 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 Seriously, Pedro thank you all. Jill. And Jill, there you and go. <laughs> advisors, Vigilant Viking. Oh, that's spelt wrong, Vin. <laughs> oh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> and changed up the... <laughs> yeah, I think it's nice. deliberate at this point. <laughs> Very good, Vin. I like the layout. <laughs> Our producers and executive producers have some new credits to look at. <laughs> Created by but, Brad. Uh, apparently, we learned that Chigo kicks a dollar sign, dollar sign. Well, it was spelled with dollar signs. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, Chigo. Yeah. <laughs> It's like the DCMA. Oh, that, that was deliberate too. Okay, all right. <laughs> I figured that was just a uh, misspeak because I do that. We'll see you next week. <laughs> that groovy gorilla, gro groovy griller. <laughs> oh, space hoppers. <laughs> Groovy. Girl-a-la-la. -la. <laughs> Groovy girl a <laughs> <laughs> But yes, thank you very much, Poop Sock. Yeah. <laughs> very good Patreon name. <laughs> Aw, and Steve hasn't missed it. I'll have to Nothing go back within watch. the realm of your comprehension, Steve, as you will. <laughs> I said poop boo on the stream. <laughs> More than that, it was, you made it, it clear was, that yeah. you could say poop. Yes, because <laughs> it's a clean word. <laughs> it was one of the few no, things. No, 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 I'm pretty sure it is the very antithesis of clean. Yeah, yeah. very true. <laughs> very true, Pedro. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm not uh, grown up enough to let a poop joke go. <laughs> yeah, Boo Love, because our, our new Patreon, Poop Sock, is his name. <laughs> do, 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 do. <laughs> <laughs> Cody the Dragon Rude. Uh, not unless they kept that license from when they had it a while back. What if they still about? have it, maybe. Uh, AMD uh, creating uh, an ARM chip for affordable single board computers. Oh, mm -hmm. the, it wasn't the Atom, was it? What was it? Um... Intel and AMD both tried to get into um, low power <laughs> development, realized that they were about a decade out of sync with the <laughs> ARM industry, so they mm -hmm. both smartly gave up on it. But yeah, if AMD still has that license, they could. Uh, it'd probably be a bit pricey for them to buy a license off of NVIDIA nowadays. <laughs> <laughs> <coughs> I'd do it just to mess with them because you know Nvidia would have to sell wouldn't have to, but they would. So. Yeah. <laughs> they just wanted that 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 little thing. It's like, oh, you want some? All right, here you go. <laughs> what was the uh, name of the AMD arm? Where's Jordan when you need him? <laughs> he keeps bringing those up. So. Yeah. I'm forgetting too. Uptron. Ah, Uptron. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> so it's a, such a weird name. You don't. It's not something. That... 
think about. <laughs> they the had the Optron. A1170, A1150, and the A1120. There's that link. There's that link. <laughs> yeah, if you just want to read it at home. There it is. <laughs> yep. Um, can't trust Wiki. It's edited <laughs> by Manatees. Oh, no. I, I actually went for their first arm uh, attempt, which was the A1100s. <laughs> Those are pre K twelves. <laughs> Steve has been. <laughs> See, Steve, you could get a Marvel reference in with Ultron Girl. But yeah, no, those Uptrons were interesting. It's like, oh yeah, that uh, massive surface CPU, 32 watts. Excuse you? <laughs> 32 watts. <laughs> there is a case to be made for, um, like, you're, you're, you're going to see, like, rollouts with our ARM in the data center just because they need to see because of just because of the power savings, man. Yep. If you need to have something running for years, 24-7, yeah, yeah. Hey, this is the power of this is the cooling, man. You're talking about reducing your entire thermal envelope. Less heat, which means less uh, money spent on cooling, less power drawn by the processor, so less money wasted in electricity. Yeah, no, it, yeah. that's a very good idea. It would be... Uh, <laughs> One of the reasons I probably still have all of my hearing is for the decade I spent in data centers, man. I bought flight deck ear covers. I didn't have like those little oh, yeah. shove-in um, pieces of foam that you buy at the store for a buck. Mm -hmm. I couldn't hear if you were <laughs> screaming in my face. Was, that was also an added benefit of them. But those things <laughs> went with me everywhere. Um, but yeah, the buzz on a data center, if you ever have that experience... And I'm not uh, talking about the rack at your small to mid-sized enterprise company. I'm talking Walmart data center. Yeah, huge. <laughs> it's a <laughs> warehouse. <laughs> it's a couple warehouses. <laughs> Resonance <a> chambers. <laughs> in different places. <laughs> oh, that's already went through. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. yeah 35 billion. The uh, initial... Uh, projections were saying a bit more, but yeah, 35 billion is pretty good. <laughs> they're just doing it, you know, they're like, whatever. But they make, you know, that's the company that makes FPGAs. Yep. So, huh. Right? Like, what you up to? What you up to, AMD? Huh? <laughs> what, you, what you got in mind with that acquired? <laughs> I don't know, you can literally do anything. <laughs> because they have the GPUs, they have the CPUs, they have the FPGAs now. <laughs> they can literally do whatever they want, basically. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> Nvidia holds Melodox, yeah. <laughs> that one, that's still, well, that, that just shows you where, where Nvidia's bread is buttered. It's not in the uh, <laughs> in your video game computers. No, no. <laughs> it might have been at one point, <laughs> not anymore. <laughs> not since CUDA became the um, GP GPU yeah. standard. I was playing around a little bit with a uh, PyTorch, man. That that that's mm -hmm. reasonably laid out. What was that, Jill? <laughs> I wanted to play with PyTorch, but I haven't yet. <laughs> uh, no, NVIDIA bought ARM. AMD is buying Xilinx. <laughs> they both make GPUs, yes, but... <laughs> Yeah, trends meta. That 
I think they shipped precisely one product, didn't they? Transmeta code morphing. Linus worked for them. I can't. <laughs> if I ever knew anything that uh, was developed by uh, Transmeta, yeah, I've heard the name. They but... made CPUs. Okay. I'm sure if you search <laughs> Transmeta code morphing. Yeah, it's better. There's software too. Hmm. Is the technology used by Transmeta microprocessors to execute x86 instructions? Okay. Caruso, that sounds. That sounds oh good. gosh, I remember that, Daisy. <laughs> Stealth mode. Founded in 1995, Transmeta began as a stealth startup. Of course, that has its own dedicated wiki page. <laughs> this was like their big selling point was uh, the CMS. It was uh, to execute x86 instructions and like it's, it wasn't a x86 CPU necessarily. That's mm -hmm. what, That was like the weird thing about it, man. Well, considering that the, um, the people working on the Raspberry Pi and Microsoft working on that ARM surface, uh, they very much still want that x86 compatibility. <laughs> yeah, FX Boy Forever, you're exactly right. I've got a couple thin clients with the Crusoe CPU in there. <laughs> Haven't heard that name in a while. <laughs> See, what you need is some desktop. You need some titanium laptops. <laughs> <laughs> the peak of Intel inefficiency? <laughs> An entire architecture. That does what exactly? Uh, looks pretty on paper. Okay, good. <laughs> <laughs> Intel tried, man. Intel tried to get everyone over to 64. They just didn't uh, get up that backwards compatibility, bro. <laughs> and then, uh, several years later, you have Canonical going, now we're just going to ditch 32 bits altogether. You what? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody, you know, I will defend Canonical again. Somebody's got to do it at some point. It takes but my video games. <laughs> and they'll get there. <laughs> See, Apple, Apple, good Apple to just to like jumped off the bus, though, man, because they're like 64-bit. And a different architecture. That's when everyone went, you know what, just here, here, here's two more glue sticks. You go play in your corner. Stay away from the roof. <laughs> um. Apple has a captive audience, much like Nintendo. <laughs> Apple so, sells mobile devices. Yeah. That's their captive audience. It's people who, uh, the very idea of having anything that's not an iPhone means that they're plebs and uh, suicide is the only way out. The um, That's uh, Apple fanboys. No, just... No, no it's just <laughs> Mateus' oversimplified view of the world, but... Um, <laughs> <laughs> it, it, I'm very simple. It, it, it explains your overall <laughs> joyful nature. Um, but <laughs> the you got to realize if you're not buying high devices, Apple views you views you as a legacy customer. The Ithadium. <laughs> Itanium. <laughs> On paper, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Itanium has got a chunk of uh, like precious metals in them, man. <laughs> oh, yes. I guess uh, they had to justify the uh, the price tag somehow because it wasn't going to be for compatibility or usefulness. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, 
Though I am curious, because Intel is going to be um, releasing that uh, heterogeneous architecture CPU. I am curious. Yeah, going with the big little design is um, desperate, but... <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's Intel saying, okay, we can compete on the high end, we can compete on price. Let's try something different. <laughs> Let's remake a different doll. Yeah, risky. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, man. Just 10 more years, and we'll get something useful out of it. Yeah. <laughs> we'll have the best weightlet machine. <laughs> yeah, no. If you uh, like the Intel processor that's in uh, El Cheapo, it's uh, 5820K. At the time, that was a uh, $550 MSRP processor. Mm hmm. Nowadays, you can buy them for less than 100 pounds on eBay. Mm -hmm. Any day. <laughs> six threads, uh, six cores, 12 threads. Yeah. And do what with it? <laughs> it it's uh, actually, it's not a terrible gaming CPU, all things considered. <laughs> What's... It's pretty cheap. You get one of those cheap Chinese X99 motherboards to go with it. That's kind of how I got El Cheapo to that level of performance for 400 pounds. <laughs> oh, really? Huh. No, I just learned that my um, NVIDIA 5500 and my uh, NVIDIA 770 has risk 5 Interesting. <laughs> I don't know, I never looked too deep into the uh, microarchitecture of a GPU, so possibly? No, Pedro, I was, I was just reading uh, the chat from the people who were watching us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I read uh, Foxy's comment too, it's like, maybe? I don't no, know. No, 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 that sentence works with one, one additional word, recent. Yeah. <laughs> that, that modifies it to a correct statement. <laughs> Foxy, I think, the, was it the 750 or the 750 Ti was the first with the Risk V chip in it? I think so. I remember reading about it. So Maxwell? Yeah. <laughs> Foxy would probably know. I remember reading on about the history. Yeah, the uh, seven uh, the seven series mm -hmm. started with Kepler, but the seven fifty and the seven fifty Ti were Maxwell. Yes, Maxwell, which was yeah. part of the reason that uh, they got as much praise as they did because oh, it's a GTX four eighty that's completely powered by the PCIe slot. Yes. All right. I, I love that. I, I actually ended up giving mine to a friend who, who still uses it for like League of Legends and whatnot. It's fine for that, for esports. <laughs> and as um, overpriced as the 1650 may be, once again, Nvidia is has that particular market cornered. It is the single most powerful PCIe only powered GPU. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> you want to yeah. drop GPU into a system, pre built or otherwise. Yeah. 3090, understood. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they come with the adapter, so maybe <laughs> if your power supply can handle it. <laughs> it's all in there. It's 3090 for everyone. <laughs> <laughs> It'd be nice if everyone had the uh, fifteen hundred dollars to buy a uh, thirty ninety. Is that how much? They well, are? to pre-order a thirty ninety, yeah. The fifteen. Well, that was the MSRP. I think they're more expensive now. Honestly, I never looked. That's so far out of like no. That's like asking me what a Titan was. I'm like I don't know. Never look. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it oh was fourteen ninety nine uh, for the thirty ninety, and the thirty eighty was six ninety nine. 
I could no. MSRPs. Th- that's not what they cost now. <laughs> mm-hmm. What's the most you ever spent on a video card? Uh, GTX 970, 400 euros. <laughs> so yeah no that's my heart at limit thanks nvidia <laughs> that was they were just getting warmed up with the prices back then mm-hmm. yeah that's true <laughs> <laughs> i've spent over 500 for render cards but that was a, a different thing for a different purpose <laughs> yeah no the 400 is my hard limit nowadays, specifically because of that damn 970. <laughs> mm. Yeah, understand. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 970. Oh my gosh. Uh, and and the one that you didn't get your full memory uh, bandwidth. For. <laughs> you get three and a half <laughs> gigs of VRAM. <laughs> Yeah. And the last 512, they work at one sixteenth of the speed of the rest of the memory. <laughs> You'll see it. Um, the 2080 Ti to 6, uh, that's going to be rough. Um, you, <laughs> might, you might see it down to 6, but at 600 bucks, man, I'd just buy 3070. I wouldn't. Yeah. Just need it. It's, it's Even, all around better card. They're not going to be $500 because right now, of the new GPUs that have been announced, that's the cheapest. So they're going to sell a lot of them. A lot of them. <laughs> well, NVIDIA doesn't cost what, care what they cost. They can't make enough to sell. I mean, that's yes. that's where NVIDIA is at right now. It's like, we can't even manufacture. We can price these at whatever, and you're still going to buy them. Deal with it. Yeah. So... Keep complaining about the prices because it doesn't affect anything. <laughs> I will keep so complaining true, about Arthur. the prices. It's not going to make a difference, but I'll keep complaining. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, in reality, I'll probably, um, I'd like something more round. Like the 3070 is going to be the, I'd really like to get a 2080 Ti. Not cheap. Just, but for in here, 3070, whatever. I might build myself a computer. There you go, Ben. <laughs> but if I do that, I'm going to put a 3090 in it. Because it's free. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no. They're, they're, they're unicorns if you want to buy them right now. <laughs> I'm, I'm patient. Yeah, right now. <laughs> I mean, I can wait six months. It took, uh, let's see... Took almost two months from when uh, Martin ordered this 1080 for it to arrive, mm. because yeah, the 1080 and the 1070, they disappear the moment they came out. Mm. <laughs> so this was the reason I was like, <laughs> yeah. um, messing around with like pre-ordering and stuff because you know I am sure if not every morning, every other morning, Pedro was like, "So what's the status on that thing I ordered?" <laughs> I'll need it's that been knowledge. every two weeks. <laughs> Okay, so every other day. Got it. Um. <laughs> yeah, Daisy. <laughs> I need that warp drive, warp core engine. <laughs> yeah, you're going to need the TARDIS to power the 1090. <laughs> Powered by the heart of a dying star. <laughs> we got to get out of here. I got to get out of here because okay. I got work to go to. <laughs> So everyone, Bye, everyone. Have a big Love happy you. fun party. Uh, we'll be back tomorrow with uh, Jordan and myself. We're going to see if we can finish up a Wolfenstein. Yeah. Yay. Merry Halloween, Miss. <laughs> <laughs>